Yo, stop the cap, stop the cat. What's up, guys? And stop capping. And this is another uh, episode of Game Talk. It's uh, September 27th, 2022. And I'm back with my uh, special guest, Jason Delfino, um, CEO of Jamoba, aka Game Over. And we're here with some good news, but maybe very unexpected news. And then it's in uh it's it's really relative to uh what's gonna be going on in the near future. So for a lot of you guys that don't know, um E three is coming back next year, twenty twenty three, at the LA Convention Center and they already have dates set up for mid June. I believe it's June thirteenth, the first day. Things could change, but that's uh, those are the dates right now. And also, um, we have another big news drop, another elephant in the room. But um, first off, let's get down to business. Um, Delfino, how is this uh, relative news for you that E3 is coming back? Um, you know, basically being our, our our American version of the Comic Con for video games, just like how Tokyo Game Show is for Japan, and you know, and of course Europe has Games Con. Okay, so so firstly, I think it's a pretty big deal for the simple fact that this is the first time they've done it since the pandemic, and I've had brief history, of course, working with Reed Pop in China, and. I have had the experience of doing Comic Cons both before the pandemic and after the pandemic. And of course, you know, naturally, uh, the situation in China is much more different as far as the policies and procedure. But to stick to kind of the ebb and flow of some things, you know, firstly, it was awesome working with Reed Pop. Everyone in the staff and everyone was very supportive. I think um, as far as the arrangement flow it was pretty good I had the opportunity to have my booth right next to Marvel but I said nah let me not do that so I don't get crushed <laughs> so badly by the competition you know keep me with the independent area so I was I was uh, attending Shanghai Comic Con as a guest in 2018 it had a really nice cast of different artists and people and at the time people were still relatively coming over uh, to Shanghai and attending the comic book conventions. I would then go on to do another convention in 2019, uh, heavily more gaming related, uh, called CCG, which is the Comic Cartoon Game Expo. And we had guests from Japan and we had guests from virtually everywhere. And then of course, when the pandemic hit in 2020, uh, all that came to an end. And realistically, it was just impossible uh, to do another uh, convention, at least in a major city like Shanghai, by the end of 2020. Fast forward, we go back. Uh, now this is with a different company, uh, not in association with Reed Pop, it's with uh, CCG, the Comic Cartoon Game Expo, and the culture is totally different. Now it's 2021, we're about a year plus removed from the pandemic, uh, but now as far as getting guests to come into the country, that became a lot more problematic and, and that was where the harsh reality of the convention started to come into play as far as guests because you've had before visitors and people from all over the world that would attend different uh, conventions and sometimes try to time their holidays to have a different experience like that so when we get to this point by 2021 it's completely different from 2019 everything's put under one roof there's a lot of regulations and different things you have to do. And, um, you know, the, one of the biggest things that hurt it was just that we couldn't get a lot of different artists to come in and take a look and, and have their stuff there at the booth. Great opportunity for me, <laughs> being, you know, one of the only foreign companies that was there for CCG 2021, but unfortunate for the whole culture of uh, having that international flavor. Yes, and I believe with the Electronic Entertainment Expo and your experience with Comic Con, especially uh, it coming back shortly soon to uh, New York Comic Con is coming shortly soon in uh, early October. Um, I'm pretty excited to 
um, see what new games and you know what next gen teases they got. Um, I love you know just the library of things that that could be delivered um, in terms of all this entertainment and now it's entertainment on the go with all this evolution of video games and um, like I said um, there was a video uh, when Keith Sutherland was in a video game uh, awards he talked about how video games has evolved so fast even superseding um, cinema as we speak and I, I was uh, going to ask you what other expectations do you have I think it's definitely got to be something where it, you know, for the fans, everyone gets a big bang for their buck. You want to be able to have different options to be able to go through different things. You want a full house. You know, some of the things that was regrettable, um, and it wasn't the company's fault. It was just the situation of the fact that we are in a post-pandemic era as far as doing conventions. So regulations are different. How to get inside and outside is different, especially in the East. You know, mask regulations are still at an all-time high. COVID testing is still happening. So to do things in large areas, it's, it's very hard to pull off. And even then, you know, you have to be able to get the artist to come in. So, you know, what I'm hoping for E3 is content. Number one, we've got to have good content. We've got to have noteworthy releases, you know, and it's got to be impactful. I think sometimes when you're doing these kind of different things and they overlap, sometimes you get big surprises, sometimes you know, you kind of blow your load early. I think some people felt certain ways when it came to, you know, the uh, the Disney press conferences and the stuff that they were doing, as well as the Marvel releases at, at San Diego Comic-Con, I think it was, you know, because you have so many announcements happening back to back. Of course, there were some cool, notable things that are even still coming out. But sometimes when you do that, you know, the expectations get raised so high that they don't have enough content to support it. That's why even with DC, they didn't even bother doing their fandom this year because, you know, for, they know that they don't have probably enough content to really release and show people, especially when they're trying to recalibrate. So what I'm hoping for from E3 is to have noteworthy things. If you're going to come back, it's got to be a big bang for your buck. When you have conventions, whether it's an E3 or a Comic-Con, you've got to have certain, you know, uh, strong things that really make it a great event. A great cosplay community, great content in the gaming stuff, great content in comics, and guests and artists. That's what makes these things run so well. That's what makes fans come in. So as long as you put those things in place, it should be a, a passable uh, E3, but you definitely need to have some strong stuff out of the gate to uh, set the tone for years to come. Yeah, I mean, I really concur with all those statements, you know, having a setback with something such as COVID, um, you know, it's just such a huge blow to everybody. And especially now, like we talked about, um, you know, a lot of people were knocking Disney for the, you know, the D23 and, you know, talk about, oh, we didn't get enough content or oh, didn't show enough. It's like, guys, you know, you do realize that, um, you know, we have back-to-back -back co conventions or, you know, if you check your calendars when, you know, we used to have these conventions, you know, that's, the, you know, we have stuff lined up so they can eventually show you guys a trailer or also, you know, just be aware of uh, when the next big movie or next big video game is going to be released. And, you know, obviously something is going to be there, make credit scene. Even video games now have make credit scenes mm -hmm. or after credit scenes. Um, you know, we were just talking about this um, the other day on how we love the X-Men Legend games that eventually transitioned to Marvel Ultimate Alliance. And you had all these, uh, um, you know, post-credit scenes with, um, you know, Mr. Sinister was supposed to, like, be, like, the next bad tease after you beat Apocalypse and X-Men Legends 2. And they had all these, you know, cut scenes and, you know, mid-credit scenes in Marvel Ultimate Alliance. So a lot of these, um, you know, mid-credit scenes, post-credit scenes, it happens, you know, starting to become a thing now even for video games to set up the next video game chapter. And especially when uh, a company wants to produce a new franchise, a new IP, and they want it to be successful. And, you know, they want stuff 
to be you know supported especially if it's something that's going to be a remaster or something that got resurrected out of a vault um you know a retcon reboot whatever the case may be um you know there's so many I, I mean this is you know i would say this is the time now where video games are really booming into this golden age where now we have so many jrpgs so many rpgs action rpgs action games um you know couch co-op is starting to slowly come back um you know multiplayer games and um we just you know l looking at um you know all these things in the uh, conventions you know in e3 like we talked about yeah cosplay um you know coming back uh, you know independent artists they're trying to get their name out there you know via social media <laughs> Uh, you know, trying to sell their products, you know, everyone trying to have their booths, uh, you know, like, especially other, I'm pretty sure other YouTube um, personalities as well. Um, another thing that's, you know, to keep in mind also is, um, you know, just the expansive um, boom of how much more anime there is now compared to what we used to watch when we were kids, you know, uh, for us um, in the early 90s, you know we had dragon ball and you know we had all these other animes or lesser known animes and then next thing you know you know we had great stuff coming from cowboy bebop to now demon slayer and you know the anime library has become huge and i know there's also been a lot of underrated you know gems out there also and even things like that are starting to be revived um, but you know we definitely need a uh, a rework on uh, that Ghost in the Shell movie after the <laughs> after that Scar Jo thing, um, and also I would definitely like to see a live action version of Trigun. Hmm. I mean I'll be curious about that. But speaking of live action, speaking of live action, I mean let you know let's kick it off here. That's right. You heard it. Earlier today, Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds, that crazy bastard, was able to go online today and trolled everybody, teasing, uh, you know, in, in the traditional Ryan Reynolds, uh, you know, fa uh, fashion, uh, talking about, you know, the progress of the new Deadpool movie. Uh, that's being um, produced by Marvel Studios, Deadpool 3, Deadpool finally in the MCU universe. And at the end of his little announcement, he was asking Hugh Jackman, he was like, hey, Hugh, one more run? One more run as Wolverine? And he was like, sure, why not? And I was like, dang. It's like, you know, a lot of people have been really hopeful for Hugh Jackman to return as Wolverine for fan service in the MCU. But if you're going to do it, you need to do it with someone like Deadpool. Um, there's been so much teasing of this over the years, to, you know, and people just, uh, you know, sandboxing what if and, you know, just wondering what's the next stage for Marvel and, you know, wanting all this fan service to be done. First, you know, we got uh, Krakinski as a Mr. Fantastic. And apparently now that's a one-off because of a, of a multiverse of reads. And we get that. But until we get further announcements, um, yeah, this is big news. And they also have this slotted appar uh, apparently for September 6, 2024 is the initial release date now um, you know, compared to other, other movies that are going to be released from um now to going into phase five starting with uh um ant-man and quantumania so jason um what was your mind going through this when this news dropped i mean it was awesome i mean th that's the simplest way to put it because you know there was so many questions about whether or not ryan was gonna make it to you know the phase three if you will of his deadpool career if you look back at the fact that 
this guy was in, you know, X Men Origins Wolverine, whichever way you're on, whichever way of the aisle you're on about that film, it was it left every it left a lot of things to be desired. To put it in simplest terms, as far as the Deadpool character, as far as Wolverine's first ever movie. And it's unfortunate because you had some actors there that were carrying the characters as best they could, like Sam Wilson. I mean, like 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 Wade Wilson. You know what I mean? And right. like Gambit. And unfortunately, after that movie flopped, you know they never wanted to even talk to that guy about playing Gambit again. Of course, Hugh Jackman had several movies under his belt already, so he wasn't going to get the the Wolverine boot. But there was a lot of questions at the time about whether or not they would actually let Ryan Reynolds have a chance to continue on the character. So I was so happy and surprised that they let him basically reboot the character. That's a very rare thing within like the confines of the superhero genre. Now we get to have, you know, a Patrick Stewart come in and play a new Professor X and we have the multiverse now. But back then they were so casting sensitive that they were just, you know, the idea of him being able to come back, I thought his chances were ruined. Then we fast forward and right at the time where it's like, what's gonna happen with Deadpool 3? Marvel brings them back to the House of Mouse. And then you really start wondering like, is this guy gonna be able to play the role? Now, when you see Patrick Stewart come back, you're like, okay, I got some hope. Maybe we can get a Hugh Jackman and get some of these other guys in. So this is just great to know that once and for all, number one, he's coming into the MCU. Um, I'm very curious to see which iteration of Deadpool we are going to get. Um, if you notice the costume that he's wearing in the in the in this trailer, it's so old and burnt and dead, and the colors are very dark. It it's not a complete new suit, but I feel like there's something behind that that it just looks so destroyed and dead and old. So I'm, I'm assuming they're going to be doing something with that. And um, either way, it's just great that we're going to get this film. I think if they even remotely do anything like what they did with Deadpool and Cable as far as the chemistry, the relationship, the long-term buildup that we've been waiting to see this happen. Um, this film will deliver in every possible way that uh, a fan that wanted this from the beginning will, will uh, enjoy. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree with that. And, you know, I mean, just with uh, an actor like Josh Brolin playing as Cable, and, you know, he seems to be a really chill guy. And, it, you know, it was a good thing that he had, like, a lot of chemistry, you know, just with him not really working with Ryan Reynolds the way, um, you know, the friendship between Hugh Jackman and Ryan. Um, you know, Josh Brolin and, you know, Ryan, they killed it. And for, you know, for what was the standard for the Fox Studios at the time. And now that you have all this... Um, you know, expansive universe coming to the fold. And, you know, this is what I'm saying, man. Like, the mouse always wins. The mouse is going to get everybody in, in, from Hollywood to go in, in, into the MCU. And this is what DC should be, you know, worried about because, you know, if Black Adam doesn't deliver, then it's it's done. And this is, you know, if, if anything, this is like a huge slap in the face to Black Adam uh, with Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine. And, you know, I, knowing that guys like Hugh and Ryan, you know, been friends, and they, I'm pretty sure their chemistry is going to be really natural. And, I'm, and you know, like, um, like you said about the suits being battle-worn, um, if we get anything um, with a mixture of their, you know, the Deadpool, Wolverine, X-Factor run costumes or, you know, of something in that matter, I'm just really curious to, to see and find out what storyline they're going to go off by with um, uh, Deadpool. And hopefully they, you know, they do the Weapons Plus project. Um, they do more insight of the Weapons uh, Plus project. And um, uh, just like they did with um, Captain America and what was it, Ultimate Avengers? Mm. I think it was. I think it was Ultimate Avengers. Yeah, it was Ultimate Avengers uh, were basically they were saying like he was the first weapon, and then you know obviously everything led up to um, weapon, weapon yeah, Weapon Eleven, Weapon X, Weapon Eleven with uh, Weapon X. Technically, one of the weapons, I guess, as well, because I believe in the Ultimate Universe they took DNA from Captain America, 
which then led to the creation of the Hulk, which I think they also utilized part of that for MCU's Hulk origin as well. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, if we were able to get that, um, what was it, that Weapon 11 Hulk, that, yep. that'd be pretty crazy. As a matter of fact, come to think about it, if they do go with this story idea, I think this probably won't happen because this would be like, too overwhelmingly awesome for them to do in one shot but if you really do play with this weapon x or this weapon facility idea depending on what the story is because we have no idea right now right you can involve hulk you can involve abomination you can involve captain america in some weird way you know what i mean like we know that when Cap was frozen, there was a black Captain America. Who's to say we don't get a flashback of showing Logan in World War II or World War... Not World War Three. Uh, you know, we might be getting there soon. Ha, ha, ha. But, um, you know, in one of these war times when Cap was on ice, you know, maybe we see Wolverine, like, working with him. And who's to say that maybe in, in uh, this MCU there wasn't some connection with that in Adamantium or, or something... I think uh, the, the story options are, are endless, and I feel like because it's Deadpool, there, you really have to leave room for just the fourth wall of just how long we've waited. Like, Deadpool has to represent the people in this film where it's like, oh my god, finally, finally, you have arrived. Better late than friggin' never. Yes, and uh, um, I'm trying to... Remember the the creator of Deadpool, Rob. I think it's um, Linefield, or um, I apologize. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm drawing a blank on that, but it's Rob something. <laughs> yeah, and he was awesome because he did like the he, he was part of the the line of people working with uh, um, Jim Lee doing like the New Mutants. Yep. And then you know if we get stuff, you know. Like I like to see a mix of stuff with like the Chris Claremont, Grant Morrison, uh, Project Rebirth, all that stuff. And I give a lot of credit to the creator, a uh, Deadpool. Um, he, you know, he's, he's, you know, everywhere he posts pictures of himself, or uh, you know, the the fandom of Deadpool and everything. He seems really humbled and really happy to see how much this has uh, gone through. But um, yeah, I mean, this is just showing. Yeah, Rob Layfield. Well, yeah, Rob Layfield. Okay, so this is just showing like the setup of how big, you know, Secret Wars is gonna be. Yep. And you know now you know now it's really one of those things where you're really putting Marvel Disney on blast, you're saying like, hey, like you you know this has to deliver. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised for um, if for whatever reason for the Kane Dynasty because we've seen um, titles change before. Um, uh, you know, I I still prefer um, Avengers Battle World before mm-hmm. Secret Wars, but um, you know, it, anything could change from now to um, you know production. You know, is going to be closed. But I will definitely like to see um, a lot of teases with Wolverine. It's, you know, even if it's like the X Men Evolution costume, um, you know, the, the orange and bl- navy blue costume. You know, if it's like a mixture of that, the white, you know, the classic white and yellow, the red, the red and uh, yellow. Um, if he has the, um, you know, the flannel with the, you know, the leather jacket. Um, I'll, I'll definitely like to see um, if they had to do a disguise thing. Um, Wolverine wore, wears the eye patch. Yeah. And it'll be a funny Easter egg for like when he had his eye patch. Um, thing going on and like the tuxedo you know the the tuxedo or whatever um yeah i'm, I'm really curious to see what's gonna ha- happen and um see um if they're gonna even introduce a striker um anything that has to do with um them you know uh, with trask building sentinels i mean right now like there's so many there's so many more questions now than the answers we're ever going to get before this movie comes out. And we got plenty of time. Yeah, and, and, and 
I just rechecked, you know, we're going to get those two Avengers movies in 2025, which is a year after this movie comes out. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely going to be a nice setup for whatever it is they're going to do when they come into, you know, the Kang Dynasty and the Secret Wars. So I think this is going to be a, like a nice setup. I think it really comes down to when they're going to release this. I'm guessing towards the latter quarter of uh, 2024 to let everything else have its its time. Daredevil Born Again, I believe, will be out by 2024. Um, all the other different films, uh, low-key, will be, have already been released by that point. Um, you know, season two, which I think will probably allude to more multiversal things. Um, that's a big one to look out for. Quantumania will have already come out. So by the time we go through a lot of these different multiversal things, um, you know, Secret Invasion, things like that, um, yeah, your Thunderbolts. Thunderbolts. You know, we're going to be in a real prime position for the time this movie comes out. But I, this is already, to me, the number one uh, blockbuster. You know, lo looking, looking to. I don't want to jinx it and say blockbuster, but number one. You know, looking forward to top of everyone's list Marvel project coming for 2024. Deadpool is such a beloved character. He's come a long way from. Uh, being spoofed off a of death stroke. He's his own guy. Wolverine's another beloved character, especially in the 90s when comic books were at an all time low. Characters like Wolverine and Deadpool and Venom and Spawn, you know, these guys were the top of the heap. And to finally, you know, have this guy be undenied and to have Ryan Reynolds come back again, I mean, this is an unprecedented thing for an actor to transcend multiple incarnations of the same character we've seen three different actors play Hulk we've seen multiple actors play Batman and Superman it's very we've seen multiple actors play Spider-Man it's very rare that when projects change they keep the same actor on I think the fourth wall lends itself for that with Deadpool but more importantly than that you know Ryan Reynolds is getting his time in the sun this guy's overcome a lot of weird movies with superhero stuff Green Lantern, all the other different things in between. He's finally getting his, his just due. And finally, if he never does another Deadpool project again, and I'm sure this is not going to be the last, but if it is, what an awesome way to go out with Wolverine. Yeah, and um, just like we talked about in terms of breaking the fourth wall, fan casting, fan service, I still remember when um, Patrick Stewart was fan casted for Xavier before it even thought about making the X Men movie, and this is like before dial up internet when we were like already transitioning to dial up internet. And the fact that Ryan Reynolds was fan casted for Daredevil for years before um, they even announced the movie, say like, has to be Ryan Reynolds, has to be Ryan Reynolds, has to be Ryan Reynolds, like, like they did it, and the fact that someone like Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman is, you know, besides Iron Man, Tony, you know, uh, Roddy, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, being our Iron Man. I mean, Hugh Jackman was there in, at the beginning with Wesley Snipes as Blade, um, Toby as Spider-Man, kicking off these Marvel uh, superhero movies. And Hugh Jackman has respectfully been our Wolverine for years and we're talking about um you know we're putting him in the same mount rushmore as christopher reeve as superman everyone saw christopher reeve as our superman he was believable as superman say like, this guy looks like superman talks like superman the same thing with uh hugh jackman he um you know he worked his ass off with this character if you saw the beginning of him being wolverine and x-men all the way up to um, Logan, you saw like how much growth of him as an actor when um, outside of any X Men um, Wolverine movie, um, he you know he's done a lot of great films, especially you know something like The Prestige with Christopher Nolan. Um, you know he's done Broadway, um, also in New York. I mean um, Hugh Jackman's resume in film speaks for itself as a successful actor and also um 
just the fact you know before people will look at superhero films as something like oh like kind of like a smudge on someone's resume it's like oh they're just doing this for kids or you know these these comic book marks but now that these comic book movies have surpassed you know a certain genre in film and also in history like Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is a legacy character like this just comes to show to you right now because you know I'm pretty sure they're trying to find a way to cast another Wolverine with another X-Men team for a future X-Men movie but as of right now um, this comes to show you that no one is touching Wolverine until we see some type of transition happens this just shows you how someone like Ryan Reynolds and um, Hugh Jackman are basically untouchable in their roles. Yeah, I mean, look, the the fact of the matter is, is that you know, there's a there's a time and a place to go over the Mount Rushmore of superhero actors, but without a doubt, you can't do that without putting Hugh Jackman on there. Hugh Jackman, to echo some of the stuff you were saying, it's like we're talking decades. As the character. It's not like he was Wolverine for years. He's the only Wolverine we've ever had. Mm -hmm. He's the only live action Wolverine we've had. And he wasn't originally supposed to do the role, obviously. But what he did was so impactful, it resonated with people. That's why, no matter what happened, he was always involved. And look, you know, people always like to poo-poo on the X-Men films, continuity, all this other kind of stuff. And of course, there's things I'd love to see done about it. Mm -hmm. But it's one of the most longest tenured... Uh, you know stories that they've had they had going on I mean if you want to take it from the first X-Men in 2000 up until let's say Days of Future Past bringing that whole kind of particular cast full circle and then capping it off with Logan I mean it was it's a phenomenal run it wasn't always commercially great and you can pick and choose which films you like between that time but the man has done his job for over 20 years in a cinematic world as the character we've had some of the greats that have played characters that lead that stay in our hearts but when we break it down from a tale of the tape they had a few years playing the character we all love christopher reeve but the man only had the man was going back and forth he had a, he had a good tenure between 1977 and 1987 you know four films between those nine years give or take adam west another one of those guys that you know has hun has like over a hundred plus episodes playing Batman. No one's ever had more time in the cape and cowl than Adam West. And there's other different examples along the way of other different guys that have, you know, kind of been along. But nobody, nobody comes close to Hugh Jackman as far as the cinematic stuff. Now, once again, nope. you've got an Adam West who has done multiple projects that also transcended different decades. But I'm talking particularly a post 2000 cinematic universe this guy managed to you know stand the test of time we're talking about the early stages too where you did say we had a blade we had an x-men we had spider-man we had we had an ang lee hulk we had some of these different kind of uh projects that didn't have a shared universe but it started to raise people's interest before we even got to some of these other, other different projects so these guys deserve their flowers particularly hugh jackman and the fact that you said that you know they're not recasting yet, it just shows that respect of taking care of the fans, taking care of what they want. And yes, we all have to accept the fact that eventually there will be a new Wolverine. Years down the road, there'll probably be a new Deadpool. However, we're going to do it right. And that's what I credit Marvel for when it comes to doing these things from majority of the time casting standpoint, that at least with the multiverse now, at least with these different type of characters like a Deadpool, we can honor these guys, even if it's not the 20th Century Fox particular wolf version of Wolverine. It doesn't matter. We know what's going on. It's Hugh Jackman. He's putting the claws on again, and he better have that damn suit. I'm telling you now. I, I mean, I, I prefer the, the brown and gold, but I'll take anything, blue and yellow, whatever. The man's got a suit up for this film, um, but man... Needs the mask. He needs needs the, mask. the mask. He needs the damn mask, but uh, either way, I'm very much looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, at this point, with Marvel, they have no excuse. If Fox could do the nice little mask and CG stuff for Ryan, they could do a nice little CG thing, you know, the white eyes and all that stuff for Logan's mask. 
um, you know, this this is this has been something that fans have been dying to see since you know the beginning of these productions. And I get it. You know, some, sometimes it's more of a hassle to do something like that physically. But ever since they um, teased um, the Wolverine movie at the end um, um, with that deleted scene of, you know, seeing his, that new suit. And it was that old school um, uh, suit that he used to wear before the, the, the white and um, I mean, the, the yellow and blue that everyone is, are so familiar with. I know he switched around costumes back and forth, but um, that uh, red and uh, yellow uh, costume is one of the most iconic. Blue and yellow, yeah. I mean, yeah. No, what well, the red and yellow too from that deleted scene from Wolverine. Oh, you mean the Wolverine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Wolverine. Yeah, the Wolverine. Yeah, the Wolverine. That was such. Uh, that was such a tease, and you know, at this point, um, I'm just I'm just really curious to see how they're gonna do the suit right, and. Um, I would like, I would definitely like to see some type of uh, flashback, um, maybe teaming up with a Chris Evans, uh, Captain America, or have some ties with World War II, um, and you know, um, I'm really excited to see what storyline they're gonna go with this Wolverine, you know, already, um, you know, being in this universe. I don't know. It, it's it's d definitely coming up with so much more questions than answers. Like I said, like I'm I'm pretty psyched about this. But um in terms of you know, not be able to contain our excitement for on um, the future of the MCU, uh where could um our audience um find you, Jason Delfino? So if you guys want to check out what I do and you want to see uh, my Jamuba gear where we have different clothes where you can scan it, wear it, scan it, and play it, and play different games right off of the jacket. All you got to do is take your phone, scan the jacket, play the game directly. No need to download or register or anything. Check out our jackets. Check out our t-shirts at gmobagear.com. That's G-M-O-B-A gear.com. Hey, thank you, Delfino. And yeah, we'd like to definitely thank you guys um, for the views for our last game talk with uh, AW uh, Fight Forever expectations. Um, we're really grateful about that. And, um, you know, you can keep um, looking up um, the rest of the uh, videos through my channel. Um, I post, you know, different video games and do daily stuff for Destiny 2. Um, I'm, I'm trying to do as much as we can. Um, do anything from um, small PSAs to um, small podcasts like this but um, I'm really grateful for you guys we almost at 100 subscribers and uh, you know if you like this video like comment subscribe and uh, keep on gaming you got anything else to say game over Jamoba game over Ichiban peace